What's up my painting friends? I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy at home right now. Today we're going to do a painting of a hibiscus flower and I'm thinking I'm going to go a little bit bolder with the colors and make it nice and bright and cheery. So let's see how that turns out. I am going to be using my Arteza acrylic paints today and I have a couple of Winsor Newton brand acryla, acrylic paints as well. So we're going to start with our palette here. We have an 8 inch by 10 inch um, canvas panel. We have four different sized paint brushes, a fine round tipped brush, a little bit larger round tipped brush, a flat tipped brush, and then a larger semi round tipped brush you could say uh, for the background and just blocking in some color. So I'm going to just throw some paint on my little palette here which is just a paper plate and then we can get started with the painting. So we have yellow ochre, raw umber, magenta light, Let's see how that turns out. Ooh, that's a great color. Neon pink. This is where we're going to go really fun with the colors there. Look at that. <laughs> Crimson red, which is a nice cool red. Orange, yellow yellow green, mid yellow, we're also going to use our phthalo green which is a nice blue green, really cool green color. We also have cerulean blue, oops probably put way too much there, <laughs> ultramarine blue, really nice cool blue, and light apricot, which I think I might just end up using as like a highlight color. We will see. And then of course we have our titanium white. I'm not going to use black today. For my darkest colors I have that ultramarine blue and my raw umber. And by blending those two together I'll get a nice neutral dark shade. All right, so we have our nice little palette there. Look how cute that turned out. <laughs> and now we're ready to sketch out the flower on the canvas. So I'm gonna take my fine round tipped brush. I'm gonna dip it in my water. And you can use any color to get started. I think I'm just gonna use this pink magenta color here. Dip this in the water a bit so it's nice and easy to work with. And we're gonna start by getting this dog hair off the canvas. <laughs> and then we're going to start by just putting a little circle uh, about the size of a dime on basically just above center. So your center would be right about there, so that circle is right above center. And then we're just going to eyeball where the outer edges of the petals are. So I'm looking at the distance in my reference photo from the petal to the edge of the photo and I have about this much space and then it kind of comes in and then here we have about the same thing and hibiscus flowers have five petals so make sure you have five petals here and they kind of overlap each other too. This one comes pretty close to the edge there. Alright, so you can see the left side overlaps the next petal. So make sure your left side is always, the left side of your petal is always overlapping the next petal all the way around so that's consistent. I'm going to move the center down just a tiny bit just to make everything a little bit more symmetrical there. Alright, now that we basically sketched out the flower, we're going to put this brush in the water. We're going to take our large brush and now we can work on the background here. So I'm mixing ultramarine blue with my phthalo green and my cerulean blue. And I'm just going to start to go right up to the edges of where I sketched out the petals. Just cover up 
the space, holding the brush in all different ways just to get all that paint off of the brush. And I'm just going to take some of my Thalo Green. The key to the background here is to make everything kind of blurry and not use a solid color to block in the full background. We're going to change things up a little bit. So I'm just taking dabs of ultramarine blue, some uh, raw umber, and just kind of filling in random spots and making sure I'm covering up all of the white space on the canvas here. Oops. And I'm starting out very dark. We'll add some highlights later, but to get started, we're just making a really dark background. And don't let yourself get too worked up about where to put the blue, where to put green, where to put brown. Just kind of randomly fill in your background. And the other trick here is to work somewhat quickly so that we can get this background blocked in before the paint all dries. Since we're using acrylic paint, it is going to dry pretty quickly. So we want to try to keep things moving. <laughs> Hold on one second, guys. There we go. I had a clumsy moment there and I just spilled my water. So yeah, if that happens, just uh clean up your workspace and then you can keep working. That's what we're gonna do here. It looks kind of like a watercolor now though, even because uh, the water <laughs> caught on my painting and knocked off some of that paint. All right, so we're gonna keep working. Just blocking in that color, covering up all the white. So we basically got this background nice and colored. Alright, nice. Now we can take some light green and start to add some little petals here. And then you can also take a little bit of white. That'll give you a nice highlight. throw some random shapes in, kind of like implying that there are some leaves farther down. Take a little bit of yellow even. Then I'm going to take some more ultramarine blue and phthalo green. And I'm going to actually take some of that raw umber with ultramarine blue and we're going to make the outer edges a little bit darker just to draw our attention further into the flower petals. nice and dark on the outer edges of the painting. Great, okay, now we can clean off that brush and we can switch to medium round tipped brush and now I'm going to use 
And now I'm going to start with this magenta color and just block in a base color. Basically just filling in, going right up to the edges of the petals. And just filling in this color. You can even make the outer edges a little bit wavier. That'll make it look a little more realistic. And then take your white and at the edge of your petal that's going to overlap, just add a little bit of white there just so that we'll be able to identify the difference or the contact point between the two petals. magenta color starts to blend with your background, you can let your background dry for a bit or you could just take a thicker amount of that magenta color and just gently let your painting, your uh, paint brush glide over it so it just kind of adds that layer right over top instead of blending in. little wavy patterns that we see on the outer portion of the petal. Alright, so we've got our base color blocked in. I'm just going to take my napkin and I'm going to get the excess paint off of that brush. Now I'm going to take some neon pink and we can start to have some fun with this. I'm gonna put the neon pink closer to the outer edges of the flower. It's a really nice, vibrant color. And just start to pull down towards the center. And my paint is still a little bit wet, where I already did some petals here with that base color, so I'm just kinda going over that paint that's already a little wet and it's blending a little bit. Just pulling that color into the center. And as you're pulling that neon pink into the center, you'll see that the it's not a straight line, it's like a curved line, kind of following the pattern in the petal. So make sure you're following that line and not making a straight line. All right, that's looking nice so far. Now we'll take some of that uh, apricot color and we're gonna just put a little bit of that on you're gonna kind of leave a little space in between each little spot where you put it because we're gonna be making some highlights now. And so I'm just gonna 
not completely covered the whole outer rim of the flower like we did for the neon, but instead leave a couple little spaces in between there so that we can make part of this be a highlight and part be a shadow. And of course, the part of the petal that comes into the center is going to be a highlight. So first we're just putting the paint on and then we'll start to blend it next. Alrighty, we can clean off the excess paint from the brush and now we can just very lightly hold your brush and pull those highlights from the outside into the center. Just kind of let it blend with the other colors in the flower. Just very gently holding your brush. And if your brush starts to get too saturated with paint, just take some of that excess paint off your brush and that will help you to blend. I'm going to try to get a nice smooth transition of color. take some of our crimson and blend that with ultramarine blue and some of our magenta. Let's take a little more ultramarine. That's going to give us a nice shadow color. We're going to put that shadow color right at the edge underneath the highlight where the petals are overlapping. You just kind of blend that by lightly holding your brush and letting it blend with the colors. And then we can just take some pure magenta and darken the central portion of the flowers again, just overlapping the colors that are already there. We could take some red or the crimson color and put that right in the center. Going to mix that with some of my and my cerulean blue. Put that even more in the center there. Just let that color kind of blend. Take some more umber right there in the center to blend out and we're gonna take some we're gonna clean off our brush and I'm gonna see what happens if we mix neon pink with white and a little bit of yellow okay it's like a really nice warm almost neon orange color and I'm gonna use that as a highlight too. So I'm gonna keep building up those highlights. Just working 
over the spots where I already put highlights, very gently holding the brush, mostly focusing on the outer edge of the pe petals here. Just repeating this on all five petals. Finally, let's take a little more white and just blend that in with the neon pink right in that mixture we just had. Add even a little more white. We want this to be nice and bright, even brighter than that color we just made. And I'm just gonna put a couple little outlines along the outer edge, not completely covering the entire outer edge of the flower, but trying to get a little bit more of a highlight on that outer edge of the petal in some spots. And you can draw that line in a little bit too, just to further boost that highlight. And if your color starts to get a little muddy from the other colors on the painting, then just blend a little more white onto your palette. Basically you want to have your lightest sections of the flower on the outer side of the petals and then it gets darker as you come in towards the center of the petal. Good. I'm going to take more of that ultramarine blue and umber and some phthalo green and get a really dark color here. And we're just going to throw that color right along the edge of the flower where we just put a highlight, only in some spots, just to further boost that contrast between the flower and what's behind it. If you put a leaf coming out of the flower in one spot, maybe don't cover up too much of the leaf just in case, um, because that would be closer to the flower and we wouldn't have that super bold shadow there. This is more for like the spots where it, there's a big drop below the flower and it's just really dark. All right, that's looking pretty nice. Let's do a little more right here and right there. there just see something little like that. Just adding a little more brown into the background here and on the outer edges. Gives us a little more to work with there. All right, so that's looking pretty. I think I'm gonna boost the shadows a little more. So I'm gonna get a little more ultramarine blue on my plate. I'm gonna mix that with my magenta. And then a little crimson. That gives me like a dark, warm purple. And then we're just going to Use that, building up our contrast again in some of these spots under the crease of the flower petals. And then also kind of starting to throw maybe a couple new little shadows in here, further boost the contrast. And then the center, just keep Starting in the center and pull your shadows out. So with your highlights, you start with the outer rim and pull your shadows in. And then for the center, you start with dark and pull the dark shadows out from the center. Now I'm just blending whatever was on my brush with the neon pink. And I'm gonna go one more time back in here and just add a little bit of a base color to even things out a bit.
just lots of layering with boosting your shadows, boosting your highlights, coming back to neutral, adding a boost again, and try that highlight color again. Alright, I think that looks pretty nice. Now we'll just work on the center portion of the flower here. I'm gonna start with my I'm gonna start with orange mixed with crimson and a little bit of that neon pink. Let's use some more orange. And I'm gonna use some apricot too to lighten that up. And then we're just gonna put like I'm just gonna take this brush and do some little dabs so that it leaves that dark shadow in a couple spots there. Now I'm just gonna take some yellow and some apricot. And now I'm just gonna get a nice good bunch of paint on the brush. And I'm just gonna hold this the brush like this so that I get just the tip of the brush to throw some little, and very lightly touch the painting, cleaning off the brush every now and then. And we're just gonna add these little dots to give us the pollen on the flower here. And it just kind of goes in a circle around there. All right, it looks nice. And then we have a little section where I'm gonna use my fine tipped brush and my crimson and we just have a little dot here, dot there. Actually, you know what, I wanna blend this a little darker. Dot here, dot here, dot here. There basically are five dots. This isn't the most visible part. So if you skip this step, not a big deal. And there's just like a little spot right there that sticks out. If you wanna further boost that, you could take some of your crimson and mix it with white. And then you can put a little highlight there. Makes it stand out maybe a little bit more. Cool, all right, I think that's pretty close to being done. Just like to keep adding detail. <laughs> but I'd say that's, that's about what we got. If you wanna boost your color on your leaves now that the background's a little more dry. You can take some more of your green and start to throw some more green on the background. If you guys have any more requests for me for paintings you'd like to learn how to create, then please leave a comment below. And thanks for watching. Happy painting. And everybody stay safe and healthy wherever you are watching from. All right, thanks guys, take care, happy painting, bye-bye.